Okay, so now that we have these unique slugs, we need to add our URLs for those any, any of those products, right? We need to be able to actually go to the URL for that specific product. So to do this, uh, we're gonna do it a couple different ways. The first way we're gonna do it is I'm gonna show you how to do it by accepting any um, variable for our URL. And then I'm gonna show you how to accept an ID, so like the instance ID. And then lastly, I'll show you how to actually only accept a slug and using the slug field itself. So go ahead and open up your urls.py. And just to note, if you don't understand exactly what I said just there, you'll see what I mean here shortly. So if I copy this and paste it below, I'm gonna keep products as the beginning of the URL. And then right after that, this is where we're gonna put our slug. We're gonna put it inside of these parentheses, uh, but I'm just gonna have those parentheses for now. And then products.views, dot single that's where we're going to call it and then we're going to call it single underscore product for the url name all right so now we actually need to create that view for single uh, but before we do that i just want to tell you that right here this is going to be an argument that's going to be passed into this view so we're actually adding a new argument in here so if i go to views i'm going to go ahead and copy all paste it underneath it and it's going to take in request and slug so this is that second argument that i just mentioned and then rename the view to single and all we're going to do now is print slug we don't have to worry too much about this stuff we just want to see what's actually going to be passed so in our url inside of these parentheses the first one we're going to do is accept kind of any value in here and set it to the variable name of slug so i'll do question mark p uh, less than and then slugs and then greater than dot star so this is taking pretty much any value in there and it's setting it equal to p or to slug. All right, so let's actually try that out. Go into our URLs and we type out product and then I can type out whatever I want here. And it changes it with percent %20 and all that. Uh, it is saying page not found, right? So that might not be exactly what we want. And that I already see why is because we just did product. So if I add an S here, it doesn't say page not found. It actually shows us some stuff. And what it's showing us is this view stuff right here. So this view is actually working. And if we go into the terminal, it shows the slug. Well, that's not really a slug as we've seen slugs before. Uh, that is really not one, but what we can, what it shows us is that that's how we set up this URL, it's accepting anything in here as an argument, right? So it's actually gonna take through and just allow all of this stuff to come through. And that's also all being printed here. Now that's kind of cool. That's good to know that that exists, but it's not the best in our case, right? We want it to be more specific to whatever we're gonna be working with, which in this case, it's a product model. Um, so our URL, let's actually change it. So it takes in the ID. So I'm going to get rid of the dot star and change it to slash D plus. And now what this regular expression is saying, it's only going to be a number or a digit, and that's going to be assigned to slug. So let's try that out. If I refresh what I just did, it's going to say it's not found. Uh, however, it is looking for the number one. So if I just get rid of all this and just keep a couple numbers, it now comes through and it'll print out that number. So what I could do with this, with this number, it's actually a little bit more useful for me. So in my view, I can actually do product equals to product dot objects dot get ID equals to slug. Well, uh, we probably would wanna call this ID as well if we were actually using ID. So let's, let's just change it all to ID and change this to ID. All right, so now that we have that, if we go in here, and refresh with the number 23 it says product matching query does not exist so that product 23 is not actually real right so the uh, product with the id of 23 is not there because we don't have 23 items we have three of them so if i do two it shows hey this is actually the product it's going to be doing um, so in order for us to see that we go back into our view and we can print product dot title all right, and I refactored my code in my models to have the Unicode doing self.title. Just so you know, if you don't have that, just go ahead and change it to that. 
All right, so now, um, now I can actually see what product it is. So I save that and then I go in here and I do a refresh and it says two, product two. It's perfect, that's exactly what we wanted. Well, maybe it's not exactly what we wanted. First of all, if it's not in there, so if I did 22, it's gonna say this, this is an error. This is not something we want our users to see. So I'm gonna wrap it into a try and exception. So just do try. And basically it's trying, it's looking for this. So if it's there, then it's gonna work. If it's not there, it's gonna it's gonna raise an exception. So in this, ca in this case, this is an exception of the object does not exist. So um, you could do except product does not exist. You can use that as the exception. Or since, since well, if there is any exception, we just, in this case, we would just want to raise a 404 error, right? So I imported on shortcuts, HTTP 404, so raise HTTP 404. So if the product doesn't exist, it's gonna try and find it. And then if it doesn't, it'll raise the 404 error, which is which is good. That's what we would wanna see. So now if I do a refresh, all it says is page not found versus that other one where if I did like this, it says page not found, but then it says it's looking in here. This is a way for us to debug what's going on versus what I had just a second ago. This is me purposely raising a 404 error because that page does not exist. All right, well, that's good, but you know, what if we had, what if we literally only have 23 products? Should we really show an ID for that product? Now it makes sense if we had this many products, right? To maybe have an ID like that. But even with that, we probably wanna have the slug and that's what slugs are all about is having a slug here instead. So then this URL is easier to read. It's easier to share. It's easier to remember all types of reasons why we would use something like this versus something like that. So let's actually refactor our code, uh, which means change our code or, or improve our code to get rid of ID and just change it to slug. So everything in here, we're just gonna change the ID to slug. And since it's now unique in our model, since it's unique now, this get function will work. It's not gonna return multiple items of that same slug. So if I save this and then in my URLs, I just need to change ID to slug and then I need to update my regular expression to handle a slug a little bit better than what we see here. So I'm gonna get rid of this and do slash W minus and put another bracket. And then that's that. That will actually make it so it only accepts a slug. You don't have to know this, how this works exactly to know that, that it does work. Uh, I'll even make notes of the ID and the all. So um, I'll do question mark P all items all underscore items and then dot star and then I'm gonna do the ID one for us too so you guys can have this as reference on how you would actually work with something like this all right and then all this slash this is the trailing slash and that dollar sign all it's saying is this string is done that's it it's so it's not gonna keep looking any further than that and something else that's kind of nice about how these arguments work is we can actually chain them together. So if I really wanted to, I could put um, an ID right here too. And then that would be two arguments that could go into my view right here. I would be able to do that. And they actually go in order of when they show up. They go, so it'd be slug ID, not ID slug. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of that and just keep it as slug and get rid of that comma there. All right, so now we can actually try this out. I have product one, that is a real slug. So if I refresh, oh, not to that one, but to product one, press enter, it shows me some of this stuff. Well, that's cool. So now our URL is actually working, our view is actually working. Um, so all we actually have to do now is just change this stuff to handle just the product. We need to change our context and our template just to handle that one single product. So we can get rid of products. We can change products as the contact to products, product and product, and then we can change this to single. All right, I don't need to print the title anymore because we know it's working. And I can also add single.html to my products uh, templates. So single.html, save it as that. I'm just calling it single because it's one, right? It's not versus all, it's not all the products, it's one single product. All right, so in here, um, we are gonna extend the base. So extends 
base.html, as we've seen a lot, and then block, uh, block content, and in block, and then h1, product.title, putting this header just so we can see it in action. So if I refresh in here, now it says product title. And then if I go to product two, it says product two and then so on and so forth. All right, so in the next one, we actually need to create those final links for this. Um, and that's what we'll do here shortly. It's, it's pretty easy to do, but there's a few different ways on how we can do it. So we will show you how to do that in the next one. See you then.